Well, good evening, folks, and welcome to our Tuesday evening home Bible study. Tonight we'll be looking at uh, Genesis chapter 26. Uh, this chapter gives us really the uh, main materials that we have that are particular to uh, uh, Isaac. Uh, in the rest of the materials in the uh, Isaac Chronicles, they are... Uh, the material about Isaac is largely told in order to talk about Abraham or to talk about Jacob. Uh, Isaac is not nearly as major a personality uh, in the book of Genesis as uh, Abraham or Jacob is. Anyway, well, let's read it. Uh, and uh, a, lot of thing, a lot of things of interest in chapter 26. And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. That's back in chapter 12. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down to Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee and will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath that I swore unto Abraham thy father, and I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. And that's, a, that's new phraseology for uh, the book of Genesis. And Isaac dwelt in Gerar. And the men of the place asked him of his wife, and he said, now we heard this before, he said, she is my sister, for he feared to say she is my wife, lest, said he, the men of the place shall kill me for Rebekah, because she was fair to look upon. And it came to pass, when he had been there a long time, that Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out at or through a window, and saw, and behold, Isaac was Sporting with or caressing or it's a play on words with Isaac. He was Isaacing or laughing with Rebecca, his wife. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. And Abimelech called Isaac and said, Behold, of a surety, she is thy wife. And how saidest thou she is my sister? And Isaac said unto him, Because I said, lest I die for her. And Abimelech said, What is this thou hast done unto us? One of the people might lightly have lain with thy wife, and thou shouldest have brought guiltiness upon us. And Abimelech charged all his people, saying, He that touches this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Then Isaac sowed in that land, and received in the same year a hundredfold. Remember, there's a famine going on. And the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great, for he had possession of flocks and possession of herds and great store of servants, and the Philistines envied him for all the wells which his father's servants had digged <clears throat> in the days of Abraham his father, the Philistines had stopped them and filled them with earth. And Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go from us, for thou art much mightier than we. And Isaac departed from there and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar and dwelt there. And Isaac digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. And he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. And Isaac's servants digged in the valley and found there a well of springing water that is an artesian well. And the herdsmen of Gerar did strive with Isaac's herdsmen, saying, The water is ours. And uh, he called the name of the well Essek, which means contention, because they strove with him, or it could mean strive or contention. And they digged another well and strove for that also. And he called the name of it Sikna, which means something like hatred. And uh, he removed from there, digged another well, and for that they strove not. And he called the name of it Rehoboth, which means enlargement or room, and uh, said, For now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. And he went up there, up from there to Beersheba. Now, Beer is the Hebrew word for well. 
The well of the oath is what that means from back in chapter 21. And the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee and will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. And he built an altar there and called upon the name of the Lord and pitched his tent there and there Isaac's servants digged a well. Then Abimelech went to him from Gerar and Ahuzath, one of his friends, and Phicol, the chief captain of his army. And Isaac said unto them, Wherefore come ye to me, seeing ye hate me, and have sent me away from you? And they said, We saw certainly that the Lord was with thee, and said, Let there be now an oath between us, even between us and thee, and let us make a covenant with thee. And thou wilt do us no hurt, and as we have not touched thee, or Rebecca, and as we have done unto thee nothing but good, and have sent thee away in peace, thou art now the blessed of the Lord. And he made them a feast, and they did eat and drink, and they rose up betimes that are early in the morning, and swore one to another, and Isaac sent them away, and they departed from him in peace. And it came to pass the same day that Isaac's servants came and told him concerning the well which they had digged and had said unto him, We have found water. And he called it Sheba, which means oath. Therefore the name of the city is Beer Well of Sheba, or Well of the Oath, unto this day. And Esau was forty years old when he took as his wife Judith, the daughter of Beerah, the Hittite, and Basimeth, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite, who were a grief of mind unto Isaac and to Rebekah. We'll stop right there. <clears throat> Much of this sounds familiar. There are uh, many parallels here in the story of, uh, or these stories that are strung together of Isaac, many parallels with the experience of Abraham. Uh, again, uh, you have in the first uh, uh, few verses, verses 1 through 5, you have, uh, in it's essentially a, a record of God's call of Isaac, just as he called Abraham. Again, uh, the life of faith is not something that originates with us. It originates with God. Uh, God initiates and we respond. Everything we do with regard to God, it has to do with response to his uh, revelation of himself. Uh, uh, sometimes we use the terminology, I have found God. Well, actually, uh, he found us, <laughs> and we responded to that. And uh, uh, God initiates and we respond. In fact, uh, every person who lives the life of faith who is a Christian has been called of God. Uh, he's called us out of darkness into his marvelous light, we're told. Uh, he has called us to come out from the world and be his special people. We are the called ones according to his purpose, according to Romans 8, 28. Uh, the called ones are the saved ones. He's called us to come to Christ. His Holy Spirit uh, calls us to Jesus. When we hear the gospel message, the Holy Spirit uh, calls and beckons us to come to trust Christ. <clears throat> uh, in the Old Testament, you have Abraham is called, and uh, now Isaac is called. Uh, it comes again in the context of a famine. We remember in Genesis 12, uh, just after the call of Abraham, uh, when he left uh, his kindred and his country and came to a land which God was going to show him when he just hadn't been in the promised land long. Uh, in uh, chapter 12, a famine came and Abraham went down to Egypt. Now, uh, here we're told there's another famine. Again, uh, one of the things that is a, a common denominator of in the, the lives of people who walk by faith is that there are times of struggle and times of uh, leanness as well as times of fatness. There's times of difficulty. And uh, it's during those difficult times that our faith is tested and it is uh, hopefully strengthened if we respond in the right way. Well, <clears throat> here was a famine, a uh, different famine than the first famine, but it 
calls to mind, and, and even in the writer's mind, that there was a famine in the days of Abraham. And uh, Isaac, uh, uh, again, goes not to Egypt. In fact, God tells him, do not go down to Egypt. And it sounds like uh, if you don't go down in Egypt, you, uh, uh, then a sojourn in this land, and I'll be with you. And the idea there is that uh, it is extremely important for Isaac to remain in the land. This idea has come up before, back when Abraham sent the old servant uh, up to Herod, where Abraham was from, where the extended family, many of them still live, to find a bride for Isaac. He had warned uh, the old servant, Eliezer, don't take Isaac uh, back there. Uh, keep him in this land. This is the promised land, and this is where God will bless us, uh, and uh, God has a, uh, has has commanded us to come and to reside and to sojourn here and trust him here to take care of us. Uh, again, some of those lessons Abraham had to learn the hard way, and uh, it would be rather natural for Isaac to think, well, uh, Daddy went to Egypt when the famine came. Uh, maybe I should go to Egypt. And God gives him clear direction, don't do that. And if we remember, in Egypt, it didn't turn out so well. Abraham uh, told a little uh, untruth down in Egypt. Uh, Sarah is uh, my sister instead of my wife and uh, got in trouble and got bounced out on their ear. And uh, again, um, Isaac does the same thing. <laughs> you don't have to go to Egypt to get in trouble, by the way. You can get in trouble wherever you are <laughs> if you don't do the right thing. And again, he, I wonder where he learned, where uh, Isaac learned to tell Abimelech, the king of Gerar, uh, that uh, Rebekah is not my wife, she's my sister. Well, daddy did it. And uh, one of the things that children do is we assume that what our parents do is okay. Well, it's all right because daddy did it. Well, uh, may not be. Uh, I can remember as a child thinking my parents knew pretty much everything and everything they did was okay. And uh, I do still think that but for the most part, they were great people. But uh, none of us are perfect. And what we give to our children is kind of a mixed bag of things. Uh, we give them some blessings. We give them some things that maybe are not as much blessings as well. Uh, and children tend to do the same kinds of things and follow the paths that their parents uh, uh, lay out for them. So uh, we need to, as parents, those of us that are parents, we need to be really careful uh, because our children are watching and they're learning and they're picking up from us. Anyway, <clears throat> but God tells uh, Isaac, uh, stay in this land and I'll be with you and bless you. And uh, pretty much makes the same kind of promises that he made to Abraham. They've come down to Isaac. In fact, uh, uh, Abraham was told, and Isaac will your seed be called. He was the child of promise. And then he's also warned and uh, reminded that Abraham obeyed my voice, kept my charge, and my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Well, this is a new kind of terminology to be, that's not found earlier in, or really much elsewhere in the book of Genesis, but it would fit right in with the original reader's experience. Uh, children of Israel out in the wilderness are getting ready to go into the promised land or there at the point of conquest uh, they had been given God's commandments and statutes and his laws and, you know, the the whole book of the covenant, part of this, uh, 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 one of the major sections in the book of Exodus, as well as the Ten Commandments. Uh, they had all of this stuff. And uh, in reading this, they would recognize that uh, Abraham's experience mirrors their experience. It's important for us to be able to to, to read these stories uh, that are given for our learning and to recognize that uh, our experience uh, walking by faith is has parallels with the experience of our forebears. So anyway, God tells him, do not go down to Egypt. Uh, Egypt, by the way, is a bad place for, for Hebrews to go. Uh, was it good for Abraham? Was it good for the descendants of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob? 
who stayed down there as slaves for 430 years. So uh, Isaac goes and dwells in Gerar. Uh, and um, the king of Gerar, by the way, uh, and this, here's another parallel with the story of Abraham. Back in chapter 20, Abraham had gone to Gerar at another time and, and sojourned, and the king of Gerar at that time's name was Abimelech. Is it the same man? Uh, it's sort of hard to figure that it would be, but it might be. Uh, again, one of the things that we want to keep in mind is some of these stories are not necessarily in, the, in chronological sequence. Uh, if you remember, Isaac was 40 when he got married. He was 60 when the twin boys in the previous chapter were born. Uh, perhaps uh, this story takes place before the birth of those boys when Isaac was younger. Uh, the story of Abraham and Abimelech in chapter 20 takes place before the birth of Isaac. Uh, and uh, so, you know, Isaac, and again, for, for sure, the boys are not mentioned, but Rebecca is, so he's married to her. So he's at least 40, which would put it at least 40, and maybe a year or two before that, because it's actually in the very next chapter after Abraham's experience with Abimelech. And Abraham told Abimelech that Sarah is not my wife, she's my sister. And here Isaac does the same thing. You'd sort of think that Abimelech would have caught on to that, you know, but maybe, you know, the time has erased that memory from him. Anyway, <clears throat> but uh, Abimelech is an older man by now. And another thing that factors in to, to make it seem like it probably is the same man is that later on in this chapter in verse 26, uh, after uh, Abimelech implores Isaac to leave because the, all of the Philistines are jealous of them uh, and he leaves, then later Abimelech goes to Gerard to see uh, uh, Isaac and wants to uh, uh, make a covenant with him. And the captain of his army has the same name as the captain did in his army uh, back in chapter 21 when they did the same thing with Abraham. In fact, uh, this, uh, that story has great parallels with this one. Anyway, <clears throat> the point of all this, though, is that uh, Isaac uh, stays in the land, but... Uh, he is afraid to tell them that Rebecca is his wife. He's afraid they'll kill him to get her. And so he tells that he's, uh, she's his sister. And then later, Abimelech uh, finds out, looks through the window, sees Isaac, uh, King James will say, sporting with her. Uh, uh, some other translations say uh, caressing her or fondling her. It, uh, the word is... Uh, <laughs> It's a form of the word Yitzhak or Isaac. He was Isaacing with her. Uh, it's the same word that was used back in chapter 21 of what Ishmael was doing with him when Sarah said to Abraham, get that woman and her boy out of here. <laughs> it's the same word that can be used for mocking. It can be used for, for caressing. It has a broad range of things. Well, the word laugh, I think we talked about this before. Uh, there are all kinds of laughs. There are happy laughs. There are uh, vicious laughs. There are uh, mocking laughs. Uh, you know, uh, all kinds of connotations uh, can go with that and be used in a lot of ways. But anyway, whatever it was that Isaac was doing was something that a husband would be doing with his wife. Perhaps he was teasing her. Perhaps he was laughing with her. Perhaps he was caressing, fondling her. Anyway, Abimelech suddenly realizes that uh, uh, Rebecca is Isaac's wife, and he uh, confronts him just like he did Abraham. Uh, it doesn't sound like that uh, the uh, Philistines are plagued this time as they were during the time of Abraham, but uh, Abimelech uh, uh, gives a solemn decree that nobody touch this woman. Well, while they're there, Isaac sows, uh, plants crops. This is the first time, by the way, uh, that we read about any of the patriarchs planting uh, and harvesting crops. 
uh, by and large, they are herdsmen. Uh, and Isaac is involved in that too, we're told in verse 14. But he plants crops. And it's during a famine you would think would be the last time you'd want to be planting. But he plants, and uh, during the midst of a famine, the Lord blesses him with a hundredfold harvest. Wow. Again, uh, there's a verse in Proverbs that, uh, you know, that, that talks about when a man's ways please the Lord. Uh, <laughs> God can bless you wherever you are. And in whatever you're doing, and it uh, it doesn't matter whether it's a famine or not, he can bless you in the midst, and he can also, you know, he can make light be in the land in the in the homes of the Israelites when there was darkness in all the land of Egypt later on during the plagues. Uh, he could put a difference between his people and uh, those that are not, it does, and it doesn't matter what's going on around you. He can bless you uh, when you are faithful and trust in him. And so uh, God is blessing him, but uh, uh, there, are, there are different kinds of responses that people have when a person is being blessed. Uh, sometimes people uh, develop respect for them. And it sounds like, by and large, in the story of Abraham, that uh, the blessing of God on him uh, evoked respect uh, but the Philistines envy Isaac. Again, uh, sometimes God's working in your life will evoke respect from some folks and will evoke envy from others, and they're envious of him. And uh, Abraham had dug some wells during his time, and uh, the, the Philistines had stopped them up uh, to prevent uh, Isaac and uh, presumably and, and uh, Abraham's people from using those after Abraham had died. And uh, along about this time, we're told that Abimelech uh, implores Isaac to go get away from us. You're mightier than we and people are envious. We don't want to have any trouble, I think is kind of his idea. And so Isaac uh, leaves from there and goes down in the valley. Gerard digs, redigs the wells that his father had dug that the Philistines had stopped up after Abraham had dug. And there's really three stages of well digging that uh, uh, Isaac is involved in. He is repairing old wells that his father had done. And then he's digging new wells and then they're, having, they're striving over them with the Philistines, and then he's removing and digging other wells that uh, hopefully they will not strive over. Again, these show some, some of the good qualities in Isaac. No, he doesn't have the dynamic personality that Abraham or Jacob had, but Isaac has some good qualities in his character. For one thing, uh, he returns uh, good for evil uh, when uh, the Philistines come and want to take those wells away from him. He just moves on to dig other wells, and he doesn't doesn't fight over them. And then uh, when they go to take those wells, he moves again and digs more wells, and uh, finally uh, is is able to find a place where they don't try to take the wells away from. Him. And it shows that he's he's a person who is able to be content with what he has. Uh, <clears throat> And so uh, he goes up from there to Beersheba, which was one of the main dwelling places of Abraham. And uh, from verse 24 on, it's at Beersheba. And this section parallels another uh, story in chapter 21 that involves Abimelech and Phicol, the uh, captain of his army. They had come to see uh, Abraham after he had been uh, with them in Gerar the other time, and uh, they came and complimented Abraham that we know the Lord's with you in everything that you do, and uh, it sounds very similar in verse 28. They say the same thing to Isaac, and they wanted to make a treaty with Abraham, and now they want to make a treaty with Isaac, and uh, again, it's it's you can can see that uh, if Isaac is being blessed as his father was, they would want to do that. Uh, and so I don't know that it's really the same story that's being told over again uh, and the names changed to, from Abraham to Isaac. I think it's something that 
easily uh, would have happened uh, uh, again as the God had blessed Abraham. Now they see God blessing Isaac. They want to uh, have a covenant with him. And uh, so uh, with, with Abraham... He had dug the well at the, at the place that they called Beersheba, and uh, uh, if you recall in that, they, they made an oath, and he swore an oath to them that I have dug this well and set apart several, seven female uh, lambs to give to Abimelech as a sign that the well was, was his work. Uh, it's interesting, Isaac's men are digging a well during the time when Abimelech and, and Phicol come to want to make a treaty with him, and uh, uh, he makes a feast for them, and they swear and they enter into the covenant together, and uh, the next day as they leave to go, after that, uh, the servants came uh, that same day saying, we felt, found water, and so he calls it Sheba, or Sheba, the, uh, the word for oath, and it's Beer Sheba, uh, well of the oath, and uh, he has built an altar there. Again, Abraham, the great altar builder, built altars everywhere he went. Uh, we don't read, again, there's not as much material about Isaac, but we do know that Isaac built an altar here too, called upon the name of the Lord, and God appeared to him and renewed the covenant with him back in verse 24. And so much of the experience that had been Abraham's uh, is continued on with Isaac. And again, much of the experience that has been Abraham's should continue on with us if we walk by faith. Uh, the Lord should speak to us and we should build, you know, we should worship him and we should devote ourselves to him and we should have encounters, personal encounters with God in our day-to-day -day experience. Uh, again, Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship. The final thing we're told about here in the last couple of verses is that Esau was 40 years old and took two wives, again, not, not God's best for anybody. Uh, uh, two wives is at least one too many, uh, maybe two too many in this case because they're both Hittites. They're not uh, part of the believing community is the idea. And, uh, uh, and they are a grief of mind and to Isaac and to Rebekah. Again, this is a foreshadowing, uh, and we've already been given uh, in the, at the before the birth of Isaac. I mean, of Esau and, ja and Jacob, when Rebecca was having a hard time in the pregnancy, and she went to inquire of the Lord, and and got the word that two nations are in your womb. Uh, the 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 weaker will serve the stronger and the 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 elder will serve the younger and so she's already they've already been given the hint that the child of promise uh through which the the promises of Abraham will be carried out the major ones will be through the younger son Jacob and again here is another hint to that effect that Esau you know has married outside the community of faith and we're told that they were a grief of mind to Isaac and to Rebecca. Those of us that are parents, we want our children to marry well. We want our children to marry within the household of faith so that they can be blessed. Uh, and again, here's a 40-year-old man, Esau, who's old enough to know better. But again, as we saw last time, his character is that of of being animalistic. I mean, suggested by the fact that he was hairy all over what he was for. Can't hardly say that without laughing. But uh, 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 he was a perpetual teenager. He just kind of lived for the moment and whatever he thought, you know, would be good to do today. That's what he did that day and uh, got him into all kinds of problems and was a grief of mind to his parents. Uh, be thankful for children that grow up and uh, make us proud and walk in the footsteps of the faithful. Again, uh, when it doesn't happen, God brings good out of that because he uses it to help our prayer life. <laughs> Aren't you glad that God accepts us, warts and all?
And he gave his son to die for us on the cross, paid for all our sins, brought him out of the grave three days later, living proof that everything has been done that needs to be done to pay for our sins if we will simply respond to his call when he draws us to Jesus upon hearing the gospel. Hope you have a good night, folks. We'll talk to you next week.